Uh, hello, and welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Today is uh, October 12th, and this is the EU-US edition. Uh, today we have myself and Bruno Varotkin, and uh, if Mark Waite shows up, shows up. Anyone else who shows up, great. Welcome everyone, as always, uh, and we'll add their names to the attendees list. For the agenda today, uh, some updates on the Google Summer of Code, uh, since that's now completed. Uh, the prototype removal from Jenkins. Oktoberfest 2023, uh, Jenkins Governance Elections 2023 as well. Uh, the ongoing Java discussion that we've been having in regards to 11.17.21 and what Jenkins supports. Quick note about DevOps World Tour and the process of choosing a plugin bomb. Is there anything else that uh, you'd like to see on the agenda for today, or does that cover things? Uh, if we have time, maybe we could just discuss the PR of mine. Uh, shameless plug once again uh, regarding uh, the use of update CLI to change uh, a few mm. Jenkins versions in the um, choose a Jenkins version uh, page. Okay, yeah, yeah sure thing. Um, is there, sorry, um, do you have the link by any chance? No? Yeah, yeah, I will um, give it in, in the chat. Sorry about that. Uh, let me check. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Yeah. No worries. I just want to make sure um, that we have, if we want to talk about it, we have time. Uh, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 Thank you. Make sure it's on the agenda. Um, yeah. So okay. So we'll put that on there as well. Um, and we can put that. Frankly, since the plugin bomb um, hasn't had any progress yet, and the uh, improved plugin tutorial instructions do have that update. Um, that's the same thing that we've been discussing for the last couple of weeks. So uh, we can probably put it above that, if anything, too, and make sure we have time to talk about it. Um, but yeah. Um, anything else besides that one, Bruno? No, thank you, Kevin. Okay. Yeah. Um, and is is the is it an issue or pull request? And is it in? No, it's a pull request. I'm I'm searching for it. Um, yeah, I got it. It's a six seven five five. I will copy the link in the chat. Okay, great. Thank uh, you. If I find the right button, <laughs> there we go. Uh, it's copied now. Thank you. Okay, beautiful. Thank you. Cool. All right. Uh, so, uh, so just uh, some notes on the Google Summer of Code. So this is now completed. Um, all projects completed successfully. Really great job to all the participants. Thank you so much for all of your work and effort. This is great. Um, we saw so much progress and so much uh, you know, care, work, efforts being put in. That it, it's really nice to see. Um, so we've got the version documentation uh, for Jenkins.io. So the version documentation for the site. Um, so this is looking really good. Chris has built a great demo site um, along with Vandi. And at this point, we're just talking, they're um, talking to the infra team, infra team to decide on details, next steps, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Bruno, any insights on the version documentation stuff? Um, no, as far as I know, uh, everything is going smoothly. It's not finished yet. There are still some problems with the blog, I guess, but um... Gotcha. It's progressing. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that um, the event, the, the events page still has a little bit of uh, work to go, but um, yeah, for the, like the, the major building blocks of the version site are there and working and it looks really good. So yeah, um, yeah, really fantastic. Um, so then, yeah, so all, all four projects were completed success, successfully. And then there is still some work pending for uh, the GitLab oh, yes. plugin modernization, <laughs> doc compose and version documentation. Um, testing more automation, just making sure that this is all kind of, you know, coalesce properly when it gets uh, pushed live. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, getting a, a personal repo, uh, even a public one uh, that kind of works for Google Summer of Code is kind of easy, but integrated into the existing Jenkins CI or Jenkins Infra organization. That's a whole other story. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, you know, uh, live rounds, so to speak. At that point, it's, it's you know, the Jenkins is moving, working constantly, being used by however many, like the the exponential number of users that we have. 
the public, the personal site is not uh, anywhere near that kind of capacity or, or usage. So yeah, it's yeah. definitely a lot easier. Hello, Mark. Thanks for joining. Uh, we were just talking about Google Summer of Code uh, and just kind of cap, uh, finalizing all that since Google Summer of Code's completed. The projects are really are in really good spots and are uh, you know at the point of how do we how do we get these into the infrastructure at this point and what needs to be done to do that. So yeah, looking really good. Uh, anything else on Google Summer of Code, Bruno or Mark? That's for me. Thank you. More okay. work to be more work to be done, but no, nothing to oh, report yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, something that um, so we just published a blog post on this, uh, but this also happened in last week's LTS. Uh, prototype has been removed from Jenkins. So um, first and foremost, thank you to ba Basel for writing the blog post, announcing all this, and uh, just as importantly, thank you to everyone for all the work that they've done in uh, collaborating on this and and helping to remove prototype. Uh, this is uh, a ton of effort from a lot of people, uh, could not have been done without everyone's combined efforts. Uh, and yeah, this, uh, this has been something that, um, this is something that Basil had announced back in May that we, that's been ongoing work, uh, up to this point. So to finally have it removed is really the culmination of all of this, which is great. Um, this will also be implemented in the November LTS, uh, as far as I can tell at this point. And uh, right now, 2.426 is actually the baseline choice for the next LTS, uh, as far as the developer thread goes. So uh, right now, everything looks like it's going to sync up nicely. Uh, on Hoktoberfest 2023, so it's in progress. We're uh, October 12th, like we said at the beginning of the meeting. Um, and uh, Compared to last week, uh, advocacy has reported that everything's basically at least doubled, which is amazing. Um, going from uh, 370 or going from 125 PRs to 377 for Jenkins CI and Infra, amazing. Uh, total Hacktoberfest PRs is 153 compared to 55 last week. Validated is 114 by 36 different contributors. Uh, we now have 20 more contributors than a week ago. That, like these are all really fantastic uh, signs of what's going on in Hacktoberfest and definitely what we want to see. Uh, the spam rate's been much lower than previously, which is great to hear as well. Mm -hmm. uh, however, contribution rate is a little bit lower, but this is a, a sentiment that's being shared by other projects as well. So this does seem to be a, a trend of this year as opposed to something specific to the Jenkins project. Um, Hackadays are have also were also just happening recently. Uh, there's been a lot of stuff going on lately. Uh, some folks may just be burnt out. Who knows? But um, the good news is we're getting a lot of work done and a lot of progress for Jenkins. Uh, next up, on actually before I move on, um, Bruno, Mark, any other Hacktoberfest notes to share or insights? Okay. No. Uh, well, so spam rate is still there, uh, and we accept that not always willingly, but there is still spam. We filter it quickly and hope hope to keep can, keep on. Thanks so much, Mark. Uh, next up on the agenda, so the Jenkins Governance Board and officer elections are uh, officially uh, happening. So uh, this was announced uh, September 18th. So uh, voter registration and nomination periods have been open since September 18th. Uh, and they close respectively at, uh, on October 27th and November 5th. So there is plenty of time to register still and more of the time than that to nominate. If you have nominations, please submit them to the election committee group. Uh, you must join the uh, election voter 2023 group if you do want to participate. Uh, if you don't join that group, you will not be able to vote. Uh, and as last year, uh, we're trusting that people are contributing to Jenkins and want to participate because they're contributing. So um, there are tons of different ways to participate and contribute to Jenkins and be a part of the community. Uh, that's uh, the all the all the, uh, the the ways you can interact and join up is is laid out right here. Um, the caveat is that uh, these these participation had to have happened prior to September first this year. Um, but outside of that, if you've contributed and want to participate and be a part of the electoral process, this is a great way to get in. Uh, 
and yeah, and there's more timelines here. Uh, so we'll look at uh, closing the voting on December 1st and announcing shortly after that. Uh, and then in November, we'll have that voting period. Uh, so uh, all five officer positions are open uh, or up for election and then two board positions are up for election. Uh, thanks to everyone who's served this past year. Appreciate it as always, uh, and as, or their past term, I should say. And I've, I've got a comment there. Yeah. Kevin has been nominated as, as documentation officer for next year, and I'm asking for your vote as a board member. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Mark gets my vote for sure. No problem there. Um. Uh, next up on the agenda, so uh, the discussion that we've been having for the last several weeks uh, regarding Java 11, 17, and 21 for Jenkins. Um, so we've got the Google Doc that we've been referring to, uh, the timeline diagram as well, um, which we've showed and provided some insights for. So the idea is uh, two years of having the uh, last Jenkins version supported, uh, or the Two years of the version supported, not required. So for right now, for instance, that would be 17. Uh, it's supported, but not required. And then two years of required, where that would be the required version. And then two years where it is unsupported. Uh, the next version would be in that two year supported, but not required uh, time frame. I think at that point, Mark, if I'm not mistaken. Or am I missing, am I messing up the timeline on that? No, you're correct. Okay. Great. So it's two years, two years supported, but not required, two years on not two years required, and then two years dropped, no longer, no longer, no longer works. Right. And then, and that's uh, visualized here, the blue is the required, and then the orange is unsupported. So, um, and that puts us in sync with uh, Java and the um, other uh, OS and uh, platform supports. So, Microsoft, Cameron, everything, everything like that will all line up accordingly as well. Uh, and then, so that will have more information and more details to come. Uh, there still needs to be a Jenkins enhancement proposal submitted for it. Uh, and once that happens, we'll be able to really have a concrete place to put things and, and have that discussion and move forward. Uh, DevOps World Tour has been going on for the last month or so. Uh, our next stop is Santa Clara, California, which is going to be next week, October 18th and 19th. Uh, Mark will be there giving his talk, as he has done at the Chicago and New York sessions. And um, yeah, there's still time to register if you haven't yet. Uh, the site is up, and then we'll still have the uh, Singapore and London dates uh, after that as well. Uh, as we had discussed really quickly uh, earlier on in the meeting, so the choosing a plugin bomb uh, has has not had progress in the last couple of weeks. Uh, the improved plugin tutorial instructions does have the update to choose the plugin bomb, uh, but beyond what we've already discussed uh, previously, there hasn't been any further progress on that. Uh, and then, um, Bruno, I'll throw it over to you because you wanted to uh, take some time to discuss the update CLI. I'll be quick. Yes. yes. Thank you, Kevin. Um, yeah. It's more or less linked to the um, choose a plugin, uh, choose a bomb, uh, and choose a Jenkins version. Uh, we already have something using Update CLI in order to uh, keep up to date the uh, improve a plugin tutorial when it comes to choosing a Jenkins version, choosing a um, bill of material version also. Uh, but we have um, a page in the Jenkins.io website where we uh, give advice about how to choose a Jenkins version. And up to now, it had been generated via a Ruby script that uh, runs each and every time we merge something into master. So it's working beautifully. The versions are correct. But uh, as we are going to have uh, in the coming months um, version uh, Jenkins.io website, I don't know if that still makes sense to have a Ruby script running whenever it runs and just update the documentation without touching the um, GitHub repo corresponding to that Jenkins.io website. 
So I just propose uh, to use update CLI in order to have a change log of what happened and when we change. So to me, it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense to everybody. So I wanted to talk about that in this meeting, just because I'd like um, the community to give feedback. Uh, should we go this way? Is it a bad idea? Or, you know, is there a better way to do that? So I like the idea of using this to kind of, to attract changes being made. In that sense, that sounds really, that's hugely useful. And uh, I can imagine where that would be valuable to anyone building or using Jenkins. Um, I mean, I don't see, I, yeah, I don't see a, I yeah. wouldn't, I don't see a, a downside to any of this whatsoever. I don't know, the, um, for the end user, it wouldn't change a thing until we uh, switch to um, a version uh, Jenkins.io because the Ruby script already works, you know, so no um, value added as for now, you know, except that you get to change log into the repo so that you know when you change the version for whatever reason. And frankly, even one of the sources I used to keep that up to date hasn't changed in a while. It hasn't changed since Jenkins 2.346.3. So it's been quite a while. It won't change tomorrow. It's each time a Jenkins uh, part is extracted from the core and made as a plugin. So the last time it, uh, it happened was on 2.346.3, if I'm not mistaken. And this file is also human maintained. So it may be wrong in the future. <laughs> you never know. We all make mistakes. Uh, me, well, I do mistakes on a regular basis. So anyway. Um, yeah, that's all I had to say about that. I'm not force pushing. Uh, I just wanted that we discuss that. Uh, we as a community, not the three of us. Yeah, of course. Um, so in the in this idea so with this idea bruno if we're having versioned documentation on jenkins.io and then uh, update cli is going to update the version within the documentation based on which versioned page it's on or I'm, no if i'm not mistaken update cli will only update the master branch so whenever you will create a version uh, and archive it for jenkins.io you will get in this archived version the fixed version that was um, up to date when we created that, you know, only the master branch will change afterwards. So update CLI won't touch any other branches corresponding to outdated versions of the Jenkins IO website, if I'm not mistaken. Mark, am I right? Okay. Yes, you're right. Gotcha. Uh, okay. At least that's that's my assumption of how update CLI works. That's what I've seen in every other location where I've seen it used is it it limits itself to the master branch or it submits yep. pull requests against the master. Yeah. Okay, great. So then, yeah, so we'd be able to manage everything accordingly after the fact too. And it wouldn't change anything that it, that's not on master. So hopefully. Great. <laughs> yeah, ideally, of course. Cool. I mean, I think that's great. And like I said, like I was saying before, Bruno, I think having a change log that showcases all of those, even if it's not super, you know, in depth or uh, doesn't, you know, go through every last piece of what changed. It's just having the fact that it changed this date at this time is huge. Um, that just lets us, you know, pinpoint those kind of things, which is amazingly helpful. So. Yeah, I, I like it. I think it's a good idea. I saw uh, Alexander Brandes had also said he's uh, he said it's look, looking promising. So there's that. But yeah, no, this is, I think this is a great idea. Obviously, we'll have to wait and see the version documentation site, the version site. Um, yeah, you know, getting that into play. But no, that's not the end of the world. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, no, thank you, Bruno. I really appreciate it. Thanks for sharing that, and thanks for. Uh, having that discussion here. Um, so that actually covers everything that I had on the agenda for today. Um, Mark, Bruno, anything else you want to add or uh, discuss while we're here? No, thank you, Kevin. Nothing else oh. from me. Okay. Oh, uh, oh no, I take it back. Oh. I take it back. Yes, one more <laughs> thing. I'm canceling Doc's office hours tonight because I have a personal scheduling conflict. 
Okay. And it's canceled. Sure. Asia Office Hours is canceled next week because I'm out of town. And so, and I think it may be canceled the following week. So Docs Office Hour Asia may be on three week, <laughs> three week empty period. All right. Well, good note. Good to know for housekeeping. Yeah, we'll be back for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Perfect timing. Great. Uh, cool. All right. Thank you very much, Mark. Appreciate the note. And um, yeah, thanks to everyone. Appreciate it, uh, as always, for joining us. The video recording will be available in 24, 48 hours. And until next week, take care and stay safe. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye.